Hello, everyone. Here is our illusion. Welcome back. In the last video, we explained the theory about the textures, and today we will learn some specific code examples to practice how to add the basic textures in WebGPU. We are going to use the studio images, dynamic canvas, and dynamic video. And welcome to download our GitHub repo. Okay, let's first look into the image texture. We add a static image to the rotating cube example. So first of all, let's understand how the UV coordinates set. In the last video, we introduced that a texture map needs corresponding UV coordinates. The easiest way is to add the UV coordinate for each vertex, and then we'll pass them into the vertex shader through vertex buffer. So generally, we'll put the position UV normal data into one vertex buffer. But of course, we can add different data into individual vertex buffers. But in this example, we'll put the UV data in and the vertex data together. Although this seems like one parameter, but they're not very related. The first three are the vertex position, which we build according to the world coordinate system. And theoretically, it can be any range of values. But UV coordinates are the standard coordinate reference system from 0 to 1. Actually, here we just do the horizontal flip and vertical flip. And here we need to clarify the relative settings of the pipeline. Firstly, we need to change the buffer's array strat into 5. That is, in one line, we'll pass 3 positions and 2 UV. We also need to add the UV information into attributes. We pass the UV coordinate into location 1. And we need to skip the first three positions. And its own lines is 2 float 32. So in this way, we can call this at location 1 in the vertex shader to get UV coordinates. But we are not going to process this UV value in our vertex shader. We are going to use them in the fragment shader. Although in the fragment shader, we return the UV and the position values of only 36 vertices. But after rasterization, GPU will do the automatic interpolation according to the position of the fragment. So in fragment shader, we'll get frag position and frag UV, which is the texture coordinates of uh, each pixel. Now let's look at how the JavaScript manage and create textures. We'll put all the relevant code into the run function. Firstly, we need to know how to load images. Here are generally two ways to load image size in the web. Firstly, we can fetch the URL of the image to get a binary blob object. Secondly, we can create an image DOM and set image.src to let the browser load the resources. And we recommend using fetch because it's more efficient on transferring and man memory management. And fetch can be done in the main thread or uh, in the worker. And let me introduce something more about the practice of image operation. WebGPU is operating in the browser environment. So the format and the size of the loaded image will be very important, especially in the mobile network. And here we listed the image formats currently being supported by the browsers, such as JPEG, PNG, WebP, GIF, and so on. In terms of size, performance, and capability, WebP is the best. It also supports the advanced features such as lossless compression, transpiration, and animation. So generally, we recommend WebP as the priority of the image resources. We can also consider using some new image formats such as JPEG XL and WebP2. These new formats will be more comprised and support more features. Additionally, WebGPU natively supports some professional compression formats, such as BC, ETC, ASTC, and extra. But these uh, professional formats are a little bit more difficult to use and requires uh, professional tools to do the compression. 
So in this example, we'll use WebP as the texture. At the same image quality, the original PNG image is more than 240 kilobytes, and JPEG needs about 130 kilobytes, but WebP only needs 80 kilobytes. So we'll save two to three times of the bandwidth and loading time. Let's go back to the code. After getting the picture data, we will need to use this create image bitmap API to convert an image object into a image bitmap object. It is very convenient for GPU transformation and canvas drawing operations. This bitmap object is the same as the matrix array, which are all resources data in CPU. So we need to create the corresponding GPU object. And here we are going to use device create a texture to tell GPU the size of the texture. Here is an array according to the width and height of the image and what the color format of the texture. And for a normal 2D image, we are going to use the default RGBA. Generally, the texture attached to an object, we, are, we always use texture bending. That is, it can be bonded by groups. Otherwise, we can't pass this into the shader. Next parameter is copy DST. It means the data can be written by JS to update. And we need to add render attachment, which can be used as attachment to render pass. Otherwise, it, the texture cannot be displayed. After creating GPU texture object, we also need to write content. We need to use device Q copy external image texture API. And in the parameters, we need to use object to set the source texture and the size of copy. It means that the entire content of the bitmap is copied to the texture. And note that this API is the same as Red Buffer, which is also a synchronized API. So JavaScript needs to wait for the copy to complete. If the image of content is very large, then we need to pay attention to the performance. And besides, in the last video, we introduced the sampling to tell GPU how to match UV coordinates to the original pixels in the texture. So we also need to create a sampler using the API device create a sampler. And GPU mainly provides two sampling modes, linear sampling and proximity sampling. And here we'll choose a linear sampling, which will get a, a smoother edge but it will slightly increase the performance over height of the GPU. And besides, we need to set the different address policies in U direction and V direction respectively. The default is climb to edge. You can test on your own with the mirror repeat and repeat to see the difference. Okay, now we have the sampler and texture and we bound them into a group. Previously, the MVP buffer has bound into layout 0, so here we are going to bind to layout 1. But we need to note here that the resources object bound into the band group must be texture view. The relationship between the texture and texture view is similar as the cameras and the context. Texture is an object and texture view is an object that can be op manipulated by GPU. And we'll introduce them later, but here we need to know that we need to call this create view function. In the fragment shader, we can get input sampler and texture through at group one. And the corresponding types are sampler and texture 2D. And the range in texture is from zero to one to represent color. And how to get the texture data? We don't have to implement the sampling process and the algorithms ourselves. WGSL has provided us a built-in function called texture sample. We just need to tell it which texture to sample and what kind of sampling method need to be used. And this API will return the color of the sample at the end. So each fragment will have a corresponding pixel color and then we put them together, we can see the texture effect. And of course, we can process the returned color. It's just like a 1 by 4 array. We can put some light, shadow, and some other effects. 
For example, in this demo, we multiply this e with the frag position. It's equivalent to add the gradual changing color. If we don't do this, we can see the original color, like this. So now we have learned how to load static image resources. And can we dynamically update the texture? Let's look into the second example, canvas texture. We added a simple canvas, and the rest of the code is the same. Instead, we use copy external image to texture API. We can directly put content on the canvas and then copy them into the GPU texture. So in this way, we can use JavaScript to generate arbitrary custom patterns, including some dynamic effects. Like in this example, we did a mouse interaction, and it will dynamically update the texture on the cube. The main point here is we copy the texture into the loop of the frame just like updating MVP buffer every frame. We can keep the content of the canvas and the texture in synchronously. So what we paint on the canvas will appear in the texture. With this feature, we can make complex custom patterns and simulate the effect of animation. Besides, we also need to use this canvas to do a scaling before pass this texture into the GPU. And we should note that this API is synchronous. If the amount of data is large or frequently written, it will greatly affect the performance. So normally we don't use this method to do some complex custom graphics. In this case, we recommend using WebGPU video textures. That's our third example, video texture. In this demo, we use video directly as the resources of texture. Firstly, we need to create a video element in JavaScript to load a video file supported by the browser. And here we are going to introduce some basic video formats supported by browsers. Most of the videos are using AVC encoding. Generally, we recommend VP8 or VP9 video format during the web development. And in the future, AV1 might be a very popular video format, which is more efficient on web loading. Now let's come back to the code. Actually, the video texture API is relatively simple. We don't need to manually create a texture. We don't need to set the size and usage of the texture. WebGPU set up an API specially for video texture called Device Import External Texture, and it only has one parameter. That is the source, i.e. the DOM element of a video. It will directly return the texture object according to the current frame of the video, and then pass this into the fragment shader through group for sampling. And note here in the external texture binding, we don't need to do the create view. We can just pass the texture directly. So this API will only return the screenshot of the current frame in which the video is playing. It doesn't update automatically while the video plays. So we need to manually call this API in each frame of the loop. We need to import the texture manually. However, this API is GPU replicates the video buffer instead of from JavaScript writing. So the performance is very good. Secondly, the lifetime of this texture returned by this API is different from the normal texture. In the previous demos, if we create a texture and we don't destroy it or force the recycling, it will be always there. But the texture obtained by this API will only exist temporarily in the current frame. That is to say, once the browser does the GPU rendering or the video refresh into the next frame, and this texture will be destroyed or recycled immediately. And the texture in the callback only exists before the vast queue submit. So that is why in every frame, we need to recreate the texture and the corresponding group because the video texture cannot be created externally. Its lifetime can only be kept in the callback function of the frame. And of course, each frame temporarily creates a new group 
it will reduce the performance. And certainly, the shader of the video texture needs a little bit change as well. Firstly, the type is different. For video texture, WGSL has specialized the texture external of this type. And secondly, WebGPU also provides a texture sample level API to do the sampling. So we need to pay attention to the API here. But the usage and results are the same. We can also do something about this color. Static textures has a wide use. But we need to pay attention to the size of the import images. And we recommend highly comprised encoding format such as WebP. Canvas texture are flexible. It can use R for custom Python. And it's also very convenient to dynamically update the content of the texture. Video texture can meet our needs for high performance dynamic content. We also recommend to use high compression video format for loading. Please practice each texture format. And in the next video, we are going to introduce something about the lighting and the materials to simulate the basic light and shades. And that's all for today. Please subscribe our channel and I'll see you next time.